Hi, I'm Bert Hovander. Let's make a snowman. You can find written instructions at the end of the video. As a bonus feature, I will show you the uh, 3D printed collet chuck that my son made me for my 72nd birthday. It works absolutely great. Be safe, think it through. Is it safe for you? And be sure to use your tailstock as much as you can. Let's get started. With my first attempt, I went ahead and shaped the snowman and then handheld my drill and tried drilling the holes and got all kinds of bad chip out. So, how could I remedy that? I probably should have taken a, a Dremel with a uh, spur bit of some kind and drilled the holes. That probably would have worked. But I decided that I was going to just go ahead and start with a, my square stock and just drill straight into it. Uh, and then, of course, I'd have to drill halfway through and then I start thinking about, well, if I drilled from here, uh, a 5 30 seconds bit would tend to wander a little bit, it would want to follow the growth rings. I would need to start my hole very slowly and work in until it got a straight start before I started plunging it in. So I want to go in probably an inch and a half here. Um, better thought would be to go across the growth rings. It'd be easier to keep it straight. Right off the table saw you can see that uh, there is a burr left on the edge that I need to take off so that uh, it'll sit flat on the, uh, the drill press table. If you look at these you'll see that this has a nice round belly this, this is uh, the plane sawn side of the, the, the board. And here we have uh, basically the quarter sawn, uh, not quite uh, oriented perfectly for the face of the snowman. But those might be considerations. So if it's lined up nicely, you might want to have uh, a nice little belly like that showing on it. I have made a template, and I'm going to put the template on here like that and I'm just simply going to tape it on. Uh, I actually have two templates here. You have the, the, the eyes here, here's one face and here's a different face. Uh, it works out well to have it on just one template. So let's tape this here. And as I tape this one, I'm going to cover up the holes from the other side of the template so I don't get confused. As you start drilling, it's important to just begin lightly. Take a little bit, clear the chips, take a little bit more, and clear the chips. Especially when I want to make a hole that's about an inch and a half into my piece of wood. Uh, if you don't, you can have a little bit of uh, bit wandering, more than wandering wood. Rub your finger on it, clean it off. Take a little bit, clear it, a little bit, and clear it. And go ahead and do it. Rub your finger to clean it off. Okay, change bits. And whenever I change bits, I try to check to make sure that it runs through before I uh, do anything else. Okay.
Now this is a 532nd, so it will tend to wander. If you're going across uh, the growth rings, uh, it'll probably give you a straighter hole. If you're going with the growth rings, it'll tend to follow the growth rings. In other words, you can easily wander. So give the bit a chance to restabilize itself before you uh, drill the rest of the hole. Then clean it off. Slightly start let it give it a second to uh, spin concentrically. Okay, that should do it. Now, on my template, I have also marked the waist. This will be the waist here, and this will be the neck. And I need to transfer that to this piece of wood so I can part down. Okay, so you can see those lines there that I have drawn. Uh, this will be the waist and this will be the neck. I don't need to draw for the head because I can I know where the head is going to be. It's going to be right up next to the chuck. And there we have our little face. And it's time then now let's go over to the lathe. Okay, we're at the lathe. You can see the little the face with the buttons. And here's where we mark the uh, which will be the waist. And this will be the neck which we're going to part down right now. Uh, at the table saw when I squared this up I did make sure that this was cut squarely on the top so that I can just slide it fit it into my uh, four jaw chuck and let it uh, sit all the way to the bottom. Tighten it up lightly, jiggle it around, make sure that it's seated very flat against the, the chuck. Tighten it up a little bit and let's see how we did. See if it's parallel to the ways. Um, that's pretty good. I would say that's excellent. It lined itself up just beautifully. And let's make sure that we have this tight. Tighten both of them. Good enough. Bring up the tail stock. Okay, so we're all tight and ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'm going to start with a um, quarter inch parting tool. And it's about, about 800 RPM somewhere in there. Close is good. Okay, let's check the uh, the buttons. Okay, the buttons are awfully close to the neck here and quite a ways away from the waist. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. I'm going to bring the, uh, the neck up just a little. I would say it's centered quite well. It'd be just fine. Let's uh, round it out a little bit. Not there, but close enough. Okay, let's we'll check that out. Okay, I do have a little ways to go yet. That's just fine. I'm looking at my uh, buttonholes, see if they're centered, and I'm happy with that now. 
let's go ahead and part this down. I'll part this down to about an uh, uh, inch and a quarter. And let's do the neck, about an inch and an eighth. And the, uh, the head, a inch and a half. Okay, so much for that. Let's round the head off. That's the diameter of the head. Get the belly so it's round. That feels good. Now I want the the, the chest to be in between the head and the uh, the belly as far as diameter the head. So if I kind of do. A little angle like that that makes it so that uh, I think that's about the right size. Let's go ahead and make this parallel now. And we can round this off. Shift over to a half inch spindle gouge. Let's go ahead and scoot the steady rest up a little bit. Get my cheaters on just a second. Now that I have my cheaters on, I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> it helps a lot. needs to be less than seven eighths of an inch here and we need to measure I'm I think I am still fat oh very close 0.891 and uh, seven eighths would be eight seven five right so we need to take a little bit more off of that so that when I drill through with my seven eighths to part it off, uh, it will part it off. Now all you need to do is uh, sand it up and I will sand it th through 600 and then do a scotch bright, look for scratches and we'll be almost done with this part of it. I was a little bit aggressive with the parting tool and so the, the waist and the neck were a little bit rough so I'm just going to use a sanding stick and just kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay, that'll do it. Back to regular sanding.
Whenever I'm sanding a sphere, I tend to run diagonally across it. It helps me uh, keep a nice round profile rather than create a flat. Okay, and I'll go ahead and uh, finish it all off and be back with you. And a little bit of power sanding to get with 600 to get rid of those final scratches. Once you've gone through 600 grit, and this is a Klingspor 600, so it's kind of closer to 400 USA, uh, you, the trick is to use the white scotch Bright, and it'll show up all your scratches. Turn the speed back up to maybe what you're turning at. Just turn it up to about 800 here. And so you're kind of burnishing it. But I love to do this before I put finish on. I used to use the finish. Uh, I like to do this in reverse. I had it going forward. Um, I used to put the finish on and then I'd see some scratches. Well, this kind of takes care of that. You'll see them before you get your finish on and at a point where you can still fix them. And you can see the nice luster that it gives. It looks as if it actually has a, a finish on it. And I'm happy with that. That's good enough. Sometimes you see little bitty marks. If you just kind of rub it with the grain, uh, the little bitty marks from the scotch Bright pad disappear. And now we're ready to uh, drill out the center. If we're ready to bore a hole in the bottom, I'm going to use a one inch bit. And I want it to be just an eighth inch shy of the neck here to leave a little bit of meat. Uh, and I put a piece of uh, tape on here to mark, uh, how, mark my depth. And here we go. Turn the speed down to oh, 0400, something like that. Ready to get as far as I can, so chips start to jam. Clear those. And now I'm going to move to a 7 8 inch bit. And this time I want to drill to just above the eyes. Okay, I'll be right back to this point here. Okay. 
Okay, all done. Clean it off. Blow it out. Take it off. I have my snowman clamped down to the drill press and I'm ready to drill an inch and a quarter hole into the belly of the uh, snowman. Here you can see that I've drilled down just beyond the one inch hole. This is the one inch hole here as you're looking in the bottom of the, uh, the snowman. So now I'm going to put a 3 8 inch hole in the back of the, uh, the snowman so that on, on the Christmas tree I can take one of the, the small lights on it that's a part of a string of lights, just kind of fold the wires up and stick the light in there and that'll be a you know a constant light um, that will light up the uh, snowman in addition to the uh, multicolored battery powered light that's going to be in the hat and here we go Very good. There's a hole. Almost done. And next step will be to part it off so I need to go back to the lathe. And now at the lathe we're going to part it off. I have a uh, 7 8 inch bit chucked up and I'm going to just put it back in like I did before and but go all the way through the head and it'll part it off and it'll just stay right on the on the drill bit here we go <laughs> and then I needed to twist it a little bit to make sure that the uh, a round hole is created that's the full 7 8 inch uh, diameter and we'll just kind of work it off and there you have the nice hole next step will be to uh, sand the, the, the top to cock the hat and then make the hat I could have the hat on straight like that but I like to have it cocked a little bit to the right side and maybe a tad forward so if I square it up I'm going to just rest it on the chest and the, uh, the belly that gives me enough of an angle uh, so I want to can't, uh, cock it to the right a little bit and maybe a tad forward so that's where I want it right there I would have liked it cocked a little more to the right. That's not much, but it's... Yeah, that, that'll do. That'll be just fine. I also need to remove the eye off of the top of the light. And that's quick and simple. Done. 
here's an unfinished hat. The light will simply go in the top of the hat and look like that. And then turning the top of the hat will turn the light on and off. Let's go make a hat. My first step is to go ahead and part down to 7 16ths, make a short little pin. Just rough it out. Change to a half inch thermal gouge. And let's check our diameter. Point 0.7, I'd like to get it down to point 0.6 or thereabouts. But let's first of all make our little uh, concave scoop down here. I think I might have to come this way. There's some chatter, so I have to go towards the center. Okay, that's good there for the rim of the hat. Let's go ahead and make the, uh, the hat band. Okay, that's pretty clean. Let's check the upper toward the, the top of the hat. Well, I want three quarters about. And I'd come way up here. That looks probably pretty good. Okay, that's uh, 0.616. That's good. That allows me enough uh, clearance for the, uh, the 7 8 hole that I need to drill through. Actually, it'd be a 29 So I have just a little bit of slop. Okay, let's establish the top of the hat. How about there? Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, I was a little bit aggressive. That's okay. Sandpaper at this point. Okay, let's do the back side. And I need a little recess right here. Let's test the hat. See how that fits. Okay, and that seats down nicely all the way around. Ooh. No, it doesn't. I need to clean that up. It's fine. I'll sand it and then I'll be back. Time to put a hole in it for the light and I need to go that deep. Okay, about 400. Just 
throw it very lightly. Gentle, gentle. Okay, then we can go ahead and drill it. Now we need to part off the uh, the rim of the hat, and I have a real small little uh, thin parting tool I made. Next thing to do would be to clean this up and bevel it in slightly so that the outside rim is what you will see making a nice uh, tight fit later with the rim that is. Just a quick hit with 320. Round it out. It's nice and snug. I took a rod of steel and wrap some velcro material around it so that I can put some velcroed sandpaper on there and it makes it easy to control that way it will fit on like that so that's the way it's going to look Okay, it's time to form the top of the hat and part it off. Here we go. I like to leave a little nubbin on it so that uh, I don't tear off the fibers going into the wood which means I'd have to sand out a lot. So I take a little 220 keep kind of spinning it in my hand Almost there. Okay, we're ready to power sand that down. Okay. And Scotch Fright buff. So all I need to do is uh, glue the light in the hat and, and then dye it black. And since I have a little bit of a loose fit with the rim, I'm going to use uh, super glue gel and just put a little dab around it here. went ahead and uh, put the light on that way I know uh, that when I put them together I'll be able to screw it down tight enough to uh, turn the light on rather than making any adjustments later on I'll let that sit for a minute or two and then I'll unscrew it and turn the light off I'm using artisan coloring dye. This is black and I found that I tried shoe polish, I've tried just spray paint and this has worked the best because if I put it on, let it sit for maybe an hour or so, let it dry and then buff it, it, it just looks beautiful. One left. I'm just kind of recoating this one. Q-tips sure come in handy. OK, 
Okay, so that one's done. After about 20 minutes, it's time to buff out the hat. See what it looks like. And there you have a nice little sheen, as you can see. It's going to look like that. I'm just going to use this diamond file to clean the the teeth up a little bit. These holes here don't need to do much because they'll get uh, some glitter in them, so you won't see them as being really clean. I have another a dowel covered with uh, Velcro, and uh, then I can stick a piece of Velcroed uh, sandpaper on it. And if it's a little bit tight in the head, I can just kind of go like that and take the burrs off so that the hat will fit better and then I can just come around the belly like that and down here on the bottom as well and that's about all I need to do to uh, to clean it up and I need to put I'll, I'll put a coat of uh, wipe on poly on it let it dry and then I'll put a coat of wipe on poly on the inside tape everything off pour a bunch of glitter in there roll it around pour the excess glitter off and let it dry and it'll be all glittered totally inside and what I have left to do is make the tree Sizing with a wrench is something new to me. I'm still working on it. Um, if I want to have a one inch uh, diameter finished, I know that it'll be oversized by using the wrench. I simply eyeball, get down close to an inch with my eye, put a little bit of a cone on it, and then I can come in with a wrench. And it is right, so that is one inch, and sometimes I can just if it's not too big, I can just slide it to the side, then I can come in Get a little closer, try it again And I end up with uh, very close to what I want And I still have enough room to make a couple of nice clean finishing passes Okay, a couple of clean passes, and let's see what actually I am down to right now. I am down to 1.0015. I did flatten the side of the wrench on the belt sander, making the edges rather sharp, which allow me to kind of slide sideways and actually sort of slice off some wood. I also went ahead and sort of sharpened this leading edge so that I could come in and use it as a parting tool. Uh, as of yet, that hasn't worked very well. It tore the wood up badly. I perhaps need to uh, sharpen it more like a parting tool, perhaps with a little bevel angle to the side on it. I will revisit this later. I haven't given up. You can see that it won't fit on very far and so I do have plenty of room to actually to, to still smooth that out, make it look really nice and make my perfect fit. So now go ahead and put your cone on it and start making a tree. Okay, we have a nice fit. We're going to go ahead and mark where I want the top of the tree, I think there. The bottom of the tree, I want over here. And we'll part it off 
down here. To make a Christmas tree, first I turn a cylinder that's one inch diameter because that's what's going to fit in the base of the uh, snowman. And then I make a, a cone shape, just the outline of a tree, and then I'm, I'll mark it with a pencil roughly where I want the branches. Say there, and kind of spread them out, make them a little further apart as you get down. Okay, and let's go ahead and put those lines on there. Rough man. This is what I use to make my Christmas trees. It's a uh, part of a saw blade. You can see the, the carbide uh, tooth there. And I just simply shaped it uh, with a nice little curve in it, like that. And so it makes it easy to make uh, branches for the, the tree. Let's Okay, let's see how it's going to fit. I'll use a uh, fine point sharpie marker, red. I'm going to do the, the tip of it first. Turn the speed all the way down. Sometimes I paint it pink, sometimes I paint it blue, usually green. Green shows up best. So I start at the bottom, and by the time I reach the top, that red should be dry so I don't have any bleed. It's easy to get it on your marker and then drag red all through the green. When I part it off, I want to make a slight undercut because I want a flat surface that can press on when I reverse chuck it. So I can square it up. This is a one inch collet chuck that my son made for me on a 3D printer. Uh, the plastic in itself has enough give to uh, spring in a little bit so I just put it in my this is my Vicmark 100 standard jaws just snug it up lightly and now I'm going to reverse chuck my Christmas tree just push it in just a little bit like that and snug it slightly and now I'm going to grab my drill chuck it has a nice uh, flat nose on it. Put it in my tailstock, and I'm going to bring it right on up. The nose of the uh, drill chuck presses against my little Christmas tree. And then I want to press on it lightly with the tailstock, rotate it, and make sure that it is indeed square in the chuck before I tighten it up, and then tighten it up. And we're ready to go. Okay, let's see how it holds. It's running very true. Okay, here we go. Looks good, and while I'm at it, I'm going to put 
couple of concentric rings on there so I can put my name and wood and that sort of thing on here. And make the center one big enough so I can put the, the year in the middle of it. And we're all good. To make the nose, I've prepared the table saw. I cut a half inch square uh, billet, and this one is like five inches long. I'm able to put it into my chuck a full two inches, and I'm going to just kind of eyeball it here and get it down to five thirty seconds. I can only make one nose at a time, otherwise I get too much vibration. Close. I can put a little taper on the end of my nose. And kind of round that nose off a little bit. Uh, I didn't mean to make it that sharp. And you see my little hole I drilled in my wrench. Five thirty seconds. I didn't want to make have to measure each nose in, individually. And I need to take a little bit more off. That was close, but not quite. All right, I'm going to touch it up with a little pointed sandpaper, making sure that it's sized to uh, five thirty seconds. An orange sharpie marker. And I'm going to make it uh, roughly 5 eighths inch long, maybe 3 quarter at most. I'm not measuring that. And another nose. And just put the nose in the nose. And so we have a snowman with a carrot nose now. Now, let's make the pipe. Just used a quarter inch wrench to size the uh, quarter inch diameter they wanted for the pipe. Let's uh, make the pipe. Okay. Next step, let's uh, drill a hole in it. And to start the hole, I need to go cross grain. I don't want to go with the grain. I want to go cross grain because I'm afraid I'll split it if I go with the grain. Let's uh, get the hole started with uh, an awl. And then I'll hand drill as straight as I can. I'm going to grab a finishing nail. That's going to be the, the stem to the pipe. Obviously I'll glue that in there and cut it off. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to use a, a center drill to put a little hole down the, the pipe for the tobacco to fit in there. Put some uh, orange glitter in there. Uh, see if we can part it off without losing it. Okay. Sand that with a little 320 on the bottom. There's your pipe, and I'll just Cut the nail off, I need to glue it on, and dye it all black. 
I'm just about ready to put glitter in the bodies. I have my wipe on poly. I put in a little uh, yogurt dish. I made myself kind of a rag brush so I can get inside. I took a uh, Q-tip and went ahead and removed most of it so that it would uh, fit in the, the teeth of the uh, snowman. And now I need to uh, just cut my tape so that I'm totally ready to go. Just kind of stick it to the table first, cut it off. Press it down, stick it together. I want a double wide. Okay. First thing I want to do is uh, plug the back hole. I don't really care if I get uh, glitter in the hole, so I'm not going to coat inside of there. And I need some paper towel so that I'm ready with that. Okay, I'm all ready. I'm just going to put ample amount in the eyes, teeth, okay, a little paper towel, clean up. I don't need finish on the outside. I already uh, put one coat of wipe on poly on it. Uh, then I buffed it out, and I put some. Uh, then I buffed on some Carnauba wax, so the finish won't stick to it that well. I can wipe it off easily. Okay, cover up the face holes. Cover the uh, the button holes and now I'm ready to do the inside I need to move quickly I don't want it to dry or if it gets soaked up then uh, it won't adhere the glitter very well it needs to have plenty in there for the glitter to stick to it Wipe off whatever is excess. Gonna tape off the top. The top is the least important part, so I'm gonna have that taped off because you will see the, the belly quite clearly, and so I need to have good access to that, make sure it gets a, a good coat. Okay, rub it around the edge, make sure it's sealed there. Okay, now this is going to be hot pink. I have my piece of paper down here already and I folded it so that I can retrieve what is extra. Okay. Roll around on the side, shake it a little bit so it gets into the eyes. So I have a leak. All right, well, that's okay. Roll it around. I want to look inside and see that there's plenty in there. There's plenty in there. And then turn it back this way, around, and then tap the out. Knock the excess out. And I think that's probably pretty good. So let's just see how we did. Okay. Done. Now that I have my paper folded, it makes it easy because otherwise if I try to fold it it just flops the glitter all over the place. Okay. 
when we're done. The Q-tips kind of fall apart, so I went and got a brush, and that's working really well for me. And sprinkle it on with my fingers like that. Tap off the excess. And one more tree. All my parts are just about done and ready for assembly. I have my trees and I have some noses, my pipes, hats, and all the bodies that are all glittered and ready to assemble. I just need to uh, make the belt. That will be the last thing I do. To make the belt, I used some uh, chair caning that I had. I went ahead and wrapped it around a piece of PVC, soaked it, and then let it dry so it would be the right shape pretty much. And so I did enough to make a, a dozen snowmen. The caning cuts easily with just a pair of scissors. And then I can go ahead and cut the end of the belt. Make it look like belt tip. I'll touch up the uh, the raw edges with a sharpie marker. That should work fine. And there's the tip of the belt. And now I just need to glue it on. The next thing I want to do is make a, a belt buckle. I made one for my experimental piece. But to make that buckle I will be using artistic wire 20 gauge. I'll put my wire in like that and if I bend them equally at the same time I'll get a nice round bend on the front part of the buckle. I'll take the long one and bend it over sharply across the back here and bring this one the other direction. Just slide it off so that I have something like that. If I clip it now, the ends will be too long, so I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. I have it pretty much centered, and I just simply clip both of those at the same time. And I'll end up with my buckle, and I just need to straighten it out a little bit. That looks close enough. I have already uh, cut the belts and put an, an end on it. Okay. Put it on the belt, have it sticking out an appropriate amount. To hold it in place, I'll put a piece of uh, masking tape over it. And so I'll look at the back side, make sure everything's lined up nicely. And now I'm going to put some glue on it, and I'm, I'm using this uh, jewelry and metal glue, which is basically CA gel. And so I'm going to try to glue in the buckle on the back side of the belt. Okay, and then I'll just set that down to dry. Now that it's dry, we're going to put a hole in the belt right here for the, the prong or the tongue to stick through. I will mark it with an awl gently. It's easy to split that caning. So with my um, number 56 bit, I'm going to drill a hole through the belt with just a, to a, just a light burst, very light pressure. I don't want to split it with a little bit. So we have a hole. Now I need to take my round nose jewelry pliers and 
make a prong for it like so I made it a little bit too long I need to clip some off it needs to be long enough to grab a hold of the buckle yet short enough to lay flat on the belt and that's probably about right and let's go ahead and cut it off about uh, 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch long so it'll be like that just for a little insurance I'm going to use some E600 to uh, secure the belt get a dab on my nail so that I can uh, accurately place it I'll wrap the belt around the snowman I will center the buckle as best I can with my buckle centered on my snowman I'm going to let this flop away put a little dab of the E600 on the belt there it's the insurance I probably don't really need it and then go ahead and lay it back down that looks pretty good so I have a hole there and so now I'm going to take my drill bit and drill right straight through and through the body don't let go take your uh, prong and you're going to pin everything together that's what you're doing here once everything is lined up reach your finger in and bend the wire over that's just sticking all the way into the through the belly and it is now fixed in place not going anywhere and for just a little bit more reassurance that things won't twist or anything I'm going to put one drop of super glue right here on the prong. If you get too much uh, super glue on the uh, the prong, don't wipe it because you wipe the uh, the black paint off. Just dab it, dab a corner of a paper towel and let it soak up, and just do it that way and you won't affect uh, the paint with just a twist of the hat and we are done <laughs>